There are nine new weapons in Fortnite Chapter 4. Some are well balanced, some are not, and some are basically just reskins of old weapons. I'm going to tell you how good they are, but most importantly, which loadouts you should be taking depending on your personal playstyle. Starting things off with the assault rifles. There are three total. The regular assault rifle, the red eye assault rifle, and the tactical assault rifle, which is only available through the reality augment, which is called tactical armory. Now, whichever one of you three you choose is based on your specific playstyle. So the regular assault rifle is better for box fighting. It has a little bit more spray potential because the fire rate's higher, but the red eye assault rifle has much higher damage per shot and it has the red dot sight. So it's a little bit better for playing storm surge and through the early and mid game. However, the regular assault rifle is just much better generally for end game. So whichever one you choose here is a little bit of personal preference and whatever style of gameplay that you're playing. Now the tactical assault rifle on the other hand is very, very useful for end game and in particular just for ammo management, mainly due to the fact that it uses small ammo rather than using medium ammo and i'll come to strategies with that a little bit later on next up is the shotguns yet again three specific shotguns currently in the meta thunder shotgun maven auto and the combat shotgun so the thunder shotgun is basically the pump with a little bit different crosshair and a little bit of a different spread but you can think of the damage as the same as a regular pump the maven auto shotgun is basically the same as the tactical shotgun so yet again there's slight differences in the fire rate and the ammo capacity the damages are a little bit different however in terms of playstyle, that's how you should think about them the third one is the combat shotgun which is also available through the tactical armory perk and this is really useful if you're playing high ground in endgame for smgs there's three there's the machine smg the twin mag smg and then also the tactical pistol you may sit and go reese tactical pistol that's not an smg well it's actually automatic and if you've watched one of my shorts on it which you can find on my channel you'll realize it has a two times headshot multiplier it's automatic and it's very very powerful now which one you choose out of these is predominantly just the twin mag smg it's about 10 percent better dps than the machine and it reloads very very quickly i'm not really sure any situation where i would choose a machine over the twin mag but that doesn't mean it's bad it's just that the twin mag is better in terms of marksman rifles there's two there's the dmr and the excalibur rifle now the dmr not very many pros are using it so far but it is very very strong it has a 55 body shot damage in the gold variation and it has i think a 90 headshot damage as well so my mental arithmetic i think that's 1.6 three times oh, i definitely did that math off the top of my head edge on power which is really really powerful but again it's not that reliable because it doesn't have a hit scan weapon it has some bullet drop so i'm not saying it's not worth taking but realistically in competitive i don't see many players using this unlike the excalibur rifle now the excalibur rifle is one of the most broken weapons in the entire game in the entire history of the game i would say it's like a sniper but also clinger sniper at the same time if you hit someone in the head it's a one hit kill insta dead they do roughly 150 to the head but because it fires a sword that sword lands and then explodes on the player like a clinger does so you could just constantly shoot this at boxes if you're on high ground yet again you could just grief all the players down below by spamming explosives down there at them if you're in a fight you can just consistently hit their walls over and over and over again with it and in its current state you basically have to have it in your inventory for competitive right now I do hope this gets nerfed in the future, but hey, I guess we just got to find out and wait and see. Now, in the overall meta, there's a bunch of other stuffs like rocket launcher and all the bows, but these aren't in competitive. But one thing that is, is the shockwave hammer. Now, the shockwave hammer is currently bugged from what I can understand, because currently you can actually hit people through walls and that is not intentional. But the shockwave hammer outside of that is also extremely busted. Now, there are going to be solo cups this season, which are called victory cups. And if you are not taking a shockwave hammer, you are missing out because it's essentially just infinite free mobility that you can fly around the map with. So 100% take the shockwave hammer if you're playing solos. Now in duos, I haven't tested if there's ways that you can launch you and your teammate in the right direction. I've not seen any of the best players do this yet, so you may both need to carry a shockwave hammer for it to be effective in duos. As always, I'll try updating the comments below if I find something out here though. Another note that I want to add in here is that launch pads are also in the game, but you can only get these from supply drops. So you're not going to get them from floor spawns. So if you ever see a supply drop on the map, it's absolutely worth going for in competitive because there's not many launch pads available total in the entire game and this is the only place you're going to be able to get one which obviously is incredibly good mobility there's also impulses which aren't that much use for competitive and grenades which are not in comp so let's get into the loadouts that you should use and how you should combine these with the reality augments 
So in terms of what your actual loadout is going to look like, AR is going to be either the regular assault rifle or the red eye. The shotgun will be the thunder or the maven shotgun, whichever one is really your preference. Your third, depending on what it's going to be, will be shockwave hammer, the Excalibur or an SMG. I would say if you're playing solos and you're looking to win a game, shockwave hammer all the way. If you're trying to W key, maybe take the twin mag SMG instead. Uh, and if you're in duos, just take the Excalibur every time. The other two items are always going to be double heals. So like minis and bigs or chug splashes. And then for the augments, you're basically always going to want to use forecast as you'll be able to see the next storm circle. And the rest of them are more ones you just want to look out for. Bush Warrior regenerates your health and partial shields while you're inside bushes. And this is really good for Storm Surge. You can just sit in these bushes, tag players, and if they hit you back, your shield's just going to auto regenerate. So super, super strong. Aerialist gives you glider redeploy that doesn't go into your inventory. So this is unbelievably powerful for, again, solos in particular. If you're just on a high layer, you could just glide to the front. And Splash Medic is also very, very good. We'll give you the chance to find chug splashes in every container you open. And the container is not just a chest. This includes ammo boxes and really anything of that sort. So there's a high chance that you're going to get a lot of chug splashes with this. So that's just the general recommendation I'd give for a loadout. However, there are some really interesting small things that you can tweak depending on your playstyle style and game mode. So if you're W keying in duos, for example, what I would recommend is one player having the Shockwave Hammer and then one player having the Excalibur. And that player that has the Excalibur can also use the Bloodhound Augment. Now this, when you hit the enemies with your Marksman Rifle or bow shots, are marked for a brief duration. And this also counts with the Excalibur since it is a Marksman Rifle. So what one player will do is they will open the fight with the Excalibur and it'll tag the opponents so they'll show where they are. Then the player with the Shockwave Hammer can just use that to fly onto them, break their builds with it, and then that allow both players to finish that one player very, very quickly. So it's a nice little strategy for W keying in duos. For in more surge heavy games, some things you might want to look out for is both players running the red eye assault rifle rather than using the regular assault rifle just because it does a much better job at getting storm surge. There's also the jelly angler augment, which will allow you to consistently fish up a bunch of different jellyfish. And the main strategy for this has been patched, which is just to infinitely sit in zone and heal. However, you can do some really cool strategies that involve trading surge. So from that second, second, third, fourth zone, you have a water near you. You can fish up a bunch of these jellyfish, have them in your base. And then when you need surge, you can play a little bit more confidently while going for tags because you know if you get hit back, you have all of these additional heals that are left next to you that you can infinitely fish back. And in a stacked surge game, I would also recommend both players just run the Excalibur. It's so powerful that it's just, there's no point in not taking. Similar to the heavy sniper, you can just double Excalibur players' walls and roofs and just guarantee damage on the players inside if they're not paying attention. The Shockwave Hammer is good, but for a duos where you need Surge, the Excalibur Rifle just absolutely comes out on top. Now, if this does get nerfed in the future, I might change my mind on this. So if you're watching this video, maybe in a couple days, in a couple weeks, and it has been nerfed at this point, potentially look to switch this out for SMGs or a Shockwave Hammer if it's also still in the meta. And one of the coolest things you can do is on height. Now, there's two specific things you want to look for on height. So remember earlier I said Aerialist is a very, very good augment to have which is the one that will give you glider redeploy. Well, that's not necessarily the one you may want to use while being on high ground. You want to look at soaring sprints. Now this, every time you sprint and jump, you're going to get low gravity. So this will negate all of your fall damage, but it'll also allow you to go up higher, to mantle higher if you want to retake high ground and go from the backside of the zone to the front side much easier without having to build and waste your materials on some of the earlier moving zones. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. Peace.